My adulterous wife's car trunk contained a hidden bag containing filthy underwear. I then left a letter that said, come home, I know, in her suitcase. Police followed her to AP's home, told AP's spouse. Then divorce papers caught them off guard. I, 31M, have been married to Lucy, 30F, for over three years. Perfectly happy, or so I thought. I treated her to a makeover for her last birthday, and I guess that was about when things started to change. Or at least when I noticed it. My wife has three makeup looks, a quick errand running look, an office look, 15, 20 minutes, and a date event look, 30, 45 minutes. When we were dating, all I saw was the date look, and she was quite stunning. Most of the time, she is in the office look. Unless we go out, then I get the date look, and the weekend is usually in errand mode. This is what tipped me off that something was a mess. She started wearing her date look to work once a week, and then sometimes when she would go out shopping on the weekend. I commented on it one night, and she said she only did it on special days when they took them out to lunch or had meetings with clients. I noticed that on days when she dressed up, she tended to be late coming home, usually with the excuse of having to work on a project. A couple of weeks ago, I took her car down to get the oil changed since topped on the way home and ran it through the car wash. I decided to give it a good vacuuming while I was there. I was cleaning the trunk when I noticed a small bag off to the side. Inside was her toiletries and makeup plus some clothes. My heart fell when I discovered inside soiled and filthy, a lingerie set even though at first I thought it was her exercise bag. When I arrived home, I didn't say anything. Instead, I started doing some housework and trying to figure everything out. I finally got an eye tag off of one of our suitcases and put it deep down into a pocket on her bag in the trunk. My work wife, Susan, has become one of my wife's closest friends, and we talk about almost everything, including things you shouldn't share with your co-worker of the opposite sex. I told Susan about the change in Lucy's makeup habits and her working late. I asked Susan if she thought Lucy could be stepping out on me. Susan's denial was swift and absolute that Lucy wasn't cheating on me, and she was just doing it because it gave her more self-confidence. Susan has a nervous tell when she is stressed about something, and after working with her for eight years, I knew she was not being truthful. I did not tell her about finding the bag in Lucy's trunk. A couple of days later, Lucy got in the shower with me and started playing with me, and after we got out, she gave me a BJ. I get a BJ from my wife on my birthday anniversary and around Christmas, and that's it. So now my head is spinning, and I check the bag in the trunk, and it has fresh clothes and a different piece of lingerie in it as well. Saturday morning, Lucy says she's going shopping and grabbing lunch at the mall. I told her to give me a second and I will go with you. She says she is shopping for clothes and she knows how I hate that. But I said I don't mind getting to spend extra time with her, and I might look for a new dress shirt while I'm out there and could use her opinion. She was clearly aggravated, but I was persistent, and we went shopping. The next week, I put a note in the bag, come home, I know. Thursday, she was acting different, and I asked if she would be home on time, and she wasn't sure, but she would call me if it looked like she might have to stay late. At 2 p.m., I saw her location had changed and was moving away from the house. I tried to call her, but it went to voicemail, and I got a text that she was in a meeting it would call me later. I sent her one back and said I was in the neighborhood and thought I would bring her a snack and a latte. The eye tag now shows her heading back to the office. I picked up her latte and a sticky bun and got to her office in time to see her run to the door. I found her in her office and dropped off the latte and said I would see her at home later. By 3 p.m., she's heading away from her office in the same direction as before. I sent her a text saying I love you with a big heart emoji and a couple of minutes later she sent me a Me Too reply. The bag stopped moving, and after about 10 minutes, I tried to FaceTime her, but she didn't pick up. Shortly, she is blowing up my phone, but I didn't answer, and texts asking me to please pick up the phone. She got home and asked me how long have I known. I told her I wondered when she started changing up her makeup routine, but wasn't sure until a couple weeks ago when I found the bag in the trunk. I told her to tell Susan she was a bad liar. I said the divorce will be friendly and she could then have her new lover without me in the way. She asked if there was some way I could forgive her and not get a divorce. I asked her for the whole truth, how long and with whom she had been cheating with. She said for a couple of months and asked me why it didn't matter who it was. I said I didn't want to accidentally shake the hand of a man that ruined my marriage. She finally told me it was a co-worker in his name. I made her call him and hand me the phone. I introduced myself and said I know everything. 
Best confess to your wife before she finds out for me and I hung up. I told Lucy she needed to block him and cut all contact, and she said she has to work with him and that would be impossible. I said I can't see any way this can work if you don't. I said I was done talking and she needed to think about how she was going to fix this. I was level-headed enough that I got her confession recorded on my phone in case she tries to change her story later. The next morning, I left early and was waiting for my boss outside his office. I told him I couldn't work with Susan anymore for personal reasons. After talking to our boss, Susan confronted me in the hall, demanding an explanation. I said she lied to me about knowing what Lucy was up to and told her I was on to her, and I said I can't work with somebody like that anymore. She apologized and said she told Lucy to end her affair before I found out for sure. I said I wish that made it better, but there would just be another lie. So in short order, I have lost my best friend and possibly my marriage. I found her co-worker's wife contact info, and I'm sending her a copy of Lucy's confession tomorrow. Just in case I have an appointment with a lawyer to discuss my options tomorrow. My wife is still adamant that we can get past this, but has yet to talk about why this happened in the first place. I feel shell-shocked, and while I don't want to get divorced, I can imagine a way forward. Busy morning. I had a good chat with the lawyer this morning. He gave me some advice and gave me a worksheet to fill out and a list of do's and don'ts. I have a longer meeting scheduled for Friday, but he will start the paperwork today. He told me that informing the other wife may come back to bite me. He was right. At work, my boss sent me with a short list for Susan's replacement that I have to interview and make a decision as soon as possible. A long email from Susan apologized for everything and wanting to meet me for lunch to talk. My boss hasn't said anything, but the rumor mill is going crazy about Susan getting kicked off my team, and the amount of but kissing around me is ridiculous. Susan got called into HR before lunch and has been put on a performance improvement plan. Seems for a fair partner turned in his resignation this morning and in an exit interview through Luciano the bus. He said they had been having an affair on company time. She is terrified she is going to get fired now. If she gets fired, it will change the terms of the divorce. So the lawyer was right about biting me. As far as the accolades for my being calm and handling this so well, I should say I have lost seven pounds in the last week, and nothing I eat stays in me very long. I don't sleep more than three hours at a time, and I am worried when I have to drive. I have called my doctor, and he prescribed me something to help me sleep, but he wants to see me tomorrow and run some tests, including an STD screen. Lucy and I are sleeping in separate rooms. I haven't mentioned divorce yet, and we have a couple therapists we are seeing Monday afternoon. Update. Lots to unpack, so I will try to be brief. Sunday dinner with Lucy's parents. They are very conservative. For the end of the dinner, she said we are going to counseling because she got caught cheating with a co-worker, I had grilled at the dinner table and later yelled at her while behind closed doors. Lucy cried most of the way home, saying that her dad now hated her. Since then, all communication from her mom has been through Lucy's sister, therapy. For me, it was like taking a test you had all the answers to and already knew you're great. Lucy finally gave a timeline of the affair, then I got to ask some questions. Did she do anal? How many times did she blow him, since it was always rationed for me? How many times did they need? Did she use condoms? How many times did I get sloppy seconds? Was he bigger than me? Who knew? Did they trash talk me when they were screwing? There were others, but she got the idea. I didn't believe her answers because I couldn't believe anything she says now. I got a chance to tell Lucy how I felt, and we talked about a few things she needed to do, like inform both our parents about what she did. Our therapist talked about what we needed to do going forward and gave us advice about what we needed to think about before our next session. But that was about the extent of what we talked about before we ran out of time. I will say one thing positive. She never blamed me for the affair or said I wasn't fulfilling her needs, forcing her to seek them elsewhere. The FaceTime with my parents went great compared to hers. They were both pretty stoic when she told them. My dad did say he was very disappointed in her decision-making. That's as close as my dad gets to calling someone the W word. I told a few of our friends the details. I made sure that a couple of them were the type to do the work for me. Lucy has been beside herself answering questions coming in from all of her friends. She has made me some ludicrous offers and opened it to hall pass, opening the marriage and other sexual favors. I told her two wrongs don't make it right, and I wasn't the one that wanted an open marriage. Tomorrow is Thursday D-Day, and she gets served her divorce papers around 9 a.m. I wouldn't give to have a video of her getting served and seeing the look on her face. Why isn't that a service the process servers offer?
I was waiting till after tomorrow to update this post and a new post. Should I do a new update post or simply add it to this one? Update. Recap. I'll call my wife Lucy. Having an affair with a married co-worker. I put her in a note in her bag saying, come home, I know. She got home and confessed to seeing him for over two months and begged for forgiveness. She said she would do anything to stay together. Man, hand me the phone. I introduced myself and said I know everything. Best confess to your wife before she finds out from me and I hung up. I had recorded my wife's confession and sent a copy to his wife. I told Lucy she had to confess to both our parents about what she did. My parents were upset, but her parents practically disowned her. The next day, her fair partner went to work early and turned in his notice. Before leaving, he threw my wife under the bus and confessed. Most of their interests happened in the afternoons on company time. I met with a lawyer and got divorce proceedings underway. We do go to therapy where I get to ask a lot of uncomfortable questions and let her know how badly she hurt me. Afterwards, she made me some ludicrous offers. An open-ended hall pass, opening to marriage, and other sexual favors. I told her who wrongs don't make it right, and I wasn't the one that wanted an open marriage. Last Thursday, she got served and I dodged her phone calls all day. I had a neighbor couple with me at the house when she got there, and they were witness to her tantrum. She threw several items at me while yelling and screaming. The police were called, and they arrived in time to see her launch a glass at me. After getting the stories from all four of us, they asked if I wanted to press charges, which I declined. They told her she needed to find some place other than here to spend the night and walked her in while she packed a bag. Her sister showed up and got her to go home to her apartment. Upon hearing about the events at my house, my lawyer wasted no time in getting a restraining order against my wife. When she got the restraining order, she had a panic attack and or a nervous breakdown and had to be taken to the ER where they kept her until Tuesday morning. Sunday, her sister came by the house and packed up the rest of her things and took them back to her place. I asked how Lucy was doing but got nothing from her sister to but some attitude. Tuesday morning, her lawyer finally reached out to mine and they had meetings scheduled to talk about a settlement. At my lawyer's request, I have an appointment with the therapist who we recommended for later in the week. A sincere shout out to several of you who have let me vent and offer encouragement privately. What's your opinion about OP? Thanks for joining us in our stories where revenge is served hot. Please consider subscribing to our channel to ensure your next chef remains loyal. Tune in for the next one to get your revenge appetite fulfilled. If you're below 18, hold on, it's not for the faint-hearted.